week. Okay. Hi, Melissa. How's your day going so far? So far, so good. How's yours going? It's going good. It's Friday. I'm excited. I'm excited to be talking to you. I'm sure I feel like every reporter who you probably talked to have probably said this, but I'm going to have to say it. (laughs) 14 year old me is geeking out on the inside that I get to speak with you, Melissa Beck. For those who do not know, welcome Melissa Beck, uh, Real World New Orleans, the homecoming reunion is coming to Paramount Plus. But before we get to reunion, we got to start from the beginning a little bit, but not too much. Uh, So for you, Real World New Orleans, what was that process like for you coming onto the show? Were you always a fan of the real world? And was that something that encouraged you to uh, audition? Oh, yes. I... I'm one of the cast members that's open and loud about um, how much I love that show, just because I understood from a very early age that MTV was the barometer of cool. So I watched every season of Real World up until mine. When I got to know too much about the sauce is when I stopped watching, but um, I had seen every season leading up to New Orleans. I loved New York, Um, Eric Neese, Heather B. Like I, Eric Neese, I followed his career on the grind. Like, so when I got into the bubble and I met him after the fact, I was like, hold on, not the grind. Um, so I, I always loved the show. And so when I tried out to be on the show and got the show, I was like, wowzers, this is cool. And then, you know, I was very famous and very broke. And I was like, oh, wowzers, this is not that cool. <laughs> Welcome to Hollywood. <laughs> Yes. Famous and very broke. Welcome to Hollywood. (laughs) For you, you know, coming onto the show, a show that you've always been a fan of, were there any fairs coming into the house and being on reality TV? Because this is 2000. So, of course, the real world's been around since like the early 90s for 30 plus years. But it's not what it it's not what it like what it was is not what it is today. So for you, did you have any fairs coming on and being on TV and having your friends and family see you? You know what? What's crazy is um, 22 year old Melissa Howard was unapologetically who she was. I was excited to be on the show. I was thankful for that opportunity. And I feel like I went in there and I was my authentic self. I mean, I, I, I was an extrovert really bad, like crazy. Um, so I had no fears. I would say that I was more fearful coming back the second time just because of what we know. Um, about how reality TV as a genre has evolved. Um, Real World was really a pioneering show in terms of um, storytelling and documentary. And so when I originally loved the show, it was about, you know, getting really to know um, the lives of seven people who had no business being in the same room. So uh, coming back to it, I, I was a little bit nervous because if you think about it in 2000, there was no social media. So there was no uh, Twitter, there was no Instagram, there was no way for you as a reality star to both be monetized and also memefied. So coming back to it, knowing that those two things are an option, it's on one hand, it's great. And on the other hand, it's very scary, but um, I love Twitter and I feel like maybe cross fingers, I know how not to become the star of Twitter for a day. So um. <laughs> you are hilarious on Twitter. I've seen some of your tweets. And yeah, let's speak about that because, you know, in the 2000s, like you said, there was no TikTok. There was no Twitter. There was no social media. So people were able to do what they were able to do and not have yep. fans sliding your comments and say whatever they want. But now the real world season one New Orleans is streaming. So now there's a new group of fans and they're talking to you. So how's that process for you? How's that feeling being like, okay, people are tweeting me and they're posting old videos. How's that for you? Yeah. Wow. The old videos are, have been that that's been really crazy. Cause I didn't, I didn't revisit the show before moving into the homecoming house just because, you know, don't nobody want to see them old teeth. So I just, <laughs> you are, so, I thought you, to me, you looked so great. Like I was obsessed with you and your look like, I work yeah, contracts. I had the short hair. Yes. I had the ascot. I, I thought I was really doing something. You made me I happy to wear my glasses. Something. Like, Girl. But like people are sending me old clips and I'm like, what are those? I've got some wild shoes on. I don't know what I was doing. But, um, you know, it's been fun revisiting it, especially revisiting it with with people for whom that show really mattered. So like I found that in a lot of these interviews, the person talking to me watched me when they were between the ages of 11 and 15, when they had no business watching grown folks television. This is a fact. So um, That was me. 
we as cast members are kind of like our, we, this whole thing is unlocking memories for y'all. And like, I feel like so uh, flattered and honored to be a part of that experience. And, and, and going back into the homecoming, it wasn't an easy decision, but I also felt like if I'm going to do it, I got to be authentic to, you know, what MTV was originally doing with this project. And I also got to go in there and have fun because I feel like that's what people most remember about that show. Yeah, you were, to me, I think I gravitated towards you because you reminded me of myself. You were such an extrovert and I was an extrovert to see a woman come on TV, take no nonsense, speak her mind, biracial, (laughs) black, proud, Asian background. Like you were just so lit to me. I was (laughs) obsessed with you in ninth grade. So, and I felt like everything you did was just, I was like, I'm obsessed with Melissa. She's so perfect for me, but for you, were there any regrets for you looking back? And is there anything that you would change? Um, listen, I, I feel like I have gone through so much therapy after having done that show and not that it's bad. It's really hard to explain this to people um, without sounding like I had a bad experience. I didn't have a bad experience. I just had a hard experience because I was a young person who became very famous overnight and I just had to grow up real quick. And then I was also Melissa from the real world permanently. And I going into that show, didn't ever think about that piece of it. You know, you're a young person, you make choices, you know, you, you, you do things, but you don't understand in the long run what that's going to mean. So um, I don't really have regrets per se, probably wouldn't have chopped all my hair off in the middle of filming, probably um, would have definitely sprung for orthodontia earlier had I known that this was going to be a path. Um, But I just, you know what, I feel like the conversations that I had on that show, I feel like the friendships that I made on that show, all of those things were important and formative to who I am today. And I love me today. So yeah, you are lit. I was looking at your Twitter, like she's still the same. And I absolutely love that. And I think that's why fans gravitated towards you because you were unapologetically you. And I think you still are. And that's why I loved watching you. I'm like, that's, she's me. Cause you know, when you watch reality shows, you pick someone who you relate to and you're like, that's my person. And I felt like that's who you were for a lot of people, including myself. So Real World Reunion, we are back 2022. Uh, It's premiering April 20th on Paramount Plus. So I know you said that you have, you know, some fairs coming back in and this is something different. And so did you see any of the cast members or talk to them before? Or did you guys just go straight to filming this show? Yeah, we, uh, very many of us have uh, lost touch. I had been in touch with Danny, you know, here and there every now and again, just, you know, a quick hello, but we'd lost touch. And and, and I want to explain I think part of it is when you go back to your private life, um, becoming and maintaining friendships with other people who are on the real world is kind of like a trigger for back revisiting that world. So you kind of just, you know, haul off and stay in your own little corner. So we really had lost touch for many, many years. Many of us did. So coming into the show was the first time we'd seen each other in a long time, which actually was such a gift because... I'd always carried kind of like a little sadness that the only people in the world who can understand what this experience feels like, I don't have um, contact with. So reconnecting in that way was really um, great. And also like a really nice like bow at the end of like this real long 20 year journey of having been Melissa from the real world forever. Wow. That's so amazing. Like, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see, is there anything uh, on the new one season two of new Orleans that fans may be surprised when they watch it, when you guys all gather together? I I think there's going to be so much, listen, I haven't seen any of it, but I lived it. And um, I watch a lot of reality TV. And if the show was cut together the way that I watched it in my mind, listen, we about to win an Emmy out here. Okay. Um, (laughs) Listen, that's why they had you guys producing. You guys became producers because they had you guys producing your own thing in the original. So now you're thinking with the producer brain, like if I think I'm gonna go. Listen, I was I I feel like on the first go round, I kind of stepped into kind of a narrator role because now people are throwing clips at me left and right on Twitter, and I'm rewatching it for the first time actually wow. since um, 20 years ago because it's never been available for streaming. Thank exactly. Years, but here we are. Um, And I was like, wow, I was really like narrating and getting it together. And I think on this one, I feel like I made some observations and, um, you know, spoke on those things. So I think it's, if the show 
happens the way it happened when I was there, it's a great show. And I can't wait to see it. I can't wait. I know fans are waiting. I'm like, I was on social media, like, I cannot wait. Started watching the old clips. Like, it just unlocked so many memories because I remember the time watching this and watching you and watching you guys. So I cannot wait to like relive this with you guys um, on the Same. new one. It's going to be super, super amazing. So for you, is there any advice that you would give your younger self before you walk into that house? What would you, Melissa, say like, girl, before we walk into this house, what would yeah. you tell yourself? You know, it's a kind of a double-edged sword because now, you know, I have a little bit, I'm more secure in who I am and I'm way more introverted. But if I were giving that advice to this person, then you wouldn't have gotten to see who she was. So I feel mm. like I would have just been like, girl, go in there and have fun just like you did. Maybe don't be crying so much. <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe let's rethink these clothing options. Maybe I let's love rethink- the fashion. I was going to ask you, you know, this is 2000 and the fashion was so different, but so unique. And, you know, we look back at Y2K fashion. So do you have that moment where you're watching the clips like, Okay, my scarf, because you had that long jacket when you walked in. Yes. Like my favorite I, moment is you literally walking in with a bag of rice with your long coat <laughs> and your scarf. So do you have those moments where you're like, that's a favorite moment, that's a favorite outfit? That was crazy. I'll never do that again. Okay, favorite. I don't know about no favorite outfits, girl. It was <laughs> listen, I, I, I was a small biracial girl coming from the tiny town in Valrico outside of Tampa. So I was just working with what I had. Um, and it wasn't much. Uh so. Um, just rewatching it is just so funny. Like the options, girl. What is you doing? But <laughs> the TikTok. But you know the TikTok girls are dressing like that now. I feel like the kids now are wearing the Y two K fashion. But I know looking back, you're probably like, what the hell was I wearing? Because you yes. wore the capris, and I literally said to my friend the other day, I was like, yo, remember when we wore capri pants? Yeah, I and I also I'm four eleven, so I had no business wearing no capri. <laughs> what was I doing? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily have a favorite outfit, but uh, I, I had such a good time um, when, when I was there. And then I think I spent so much time in the aftermath being worried about like what it means to be Melissa from the real world forever that I kind of shrunk away. So really coming back to homecoming and revisiting it and like understanding what it means to people, like what it meant for like, you know, young biracial girls, young black girls. I was, listen, I was 22 and I didn't have all of the language and I didn't have all of the tools, but I sure, you know what? I dropped a few gems. Yes, you did. I kind of knew what I was talking you, about. You put kinda. it on Julie. You let Julie know, like, look, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You let David know, aka Tokyo know, like you, I felt like you dropped so many good gems. And I think that happens when we get older and we look back at ourselves and we're like, I wish I could have said this, but I do think you were so wise and you were wise for your age. And for like a little black girl like me watching it, I was like, I like her. <laughs> so cool. So well, I appreciate thank you. that. Thank you. Are you excited about Come On Be My Baby tonight? The revival? Honey, let me tell you something. <laughs> I've been trying to say, I've been singing this song for 20 years and there's some yeah. people who had no idea what I was talking about. Me and my best friend, shout out to her. I have to give her a super shout out. She and I, that's like our special thing. So when I seen the preview, I'm like, girl. Same. The song, Same. the show, it's coming okay, first back. of all, let's just, just stop. Stop. I need you to stop. First of all, let's just talk about the remix, okay? How are they going to do it real ominous like Jordan Peele levels? That was, was kind like, of creepy. I was like, it was like, come on, be my baby. I was like, whoa, this is like Jordan Peele. Oh, it was so good. You know? He said, like, so whoa, whoa, whoa. I was like, okay, Tokyo, I cannot. It was so good. And I haven't seen the episode, so yeah. coming off of the show and moving back into my own personal house and sitting around and waiting for the show to come out, when we got the trailer and I heard Ominous come on Be My Baby tonight, I was like, that alone, I just felt so good about the process. I was like, okay, you Classic. know what, I'm going to be okay because We're gonna whoever be good. remixes knows what they're doing. And I feel like they're going to do this show right. I, yeah. I do. I'm like, I'm actually, I was really happy to reconnect with Tokyo because um, yeah. I'd always carried a little bit of a sadness for like the direction of our friendship and how we didn't um, have the opportunity to become friends because I thought that we would meet each other after the fact. Yeah. Um, so seeing him again that was really fun and interesting Danny and Kelly reconnecting I mean it's it it listen it was a weird gift <laughs> excuse me I took it and I ran and I, I know I have that's no right regrets. <laughs> I absolutely love that <clears throat> excuse me as I'm choking um my favorite question I've always wanted to ask people in the real world is there if there's any other city 
that you can tap into, which season would it be for you? Oh, like <laughs> move in I'm with so a sorry. different cast? Yes. I'm going to ask that again. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's okay. Y'all, I'm sorry. I'm like, allergy Girl, that's season? that's what the edit is for. Get your mm-hmm. pop on. Okay. Thank you for the <laughs> editing. Why am I choking? <laughs> I think it was come on be my baby tonight that kind of got we me got like, excited it's okay <laughs> <laughs> oh my god okay let me ask that again yep okay Melissa <laughs> so for all the real world seasons that's been out is there any other city or season that you've always wanted to be a part of which season would it be or which city would you love to be a part of hmm. I really loved Miami because coming up like Dan Renzi was like my person after you know was it your letter to read that that girl Mm. that scene was like you know it's embedded in your brain um I really loved Cynthia uh I really loved oh Seattle was a good one remember when David was like dating the producer girl Mm. um and that's the thing I was a fan of the show I was a big time fan of the show and I watched all of the seasons until mine came out so um I would have liked to mess with everybody Sharon on London I loved her she was the only reason to watch that one. Yeah. That yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I love all the real worlds. Um, one through 10 were good. All those were good episodes. That was, you know, that was the heyday of reality TV. That was before it became the thing that it is now back then. Like there was a lot of like weird freedom because we didn't have the internet. Right. Cause I feel like when I was watching reality TV, <clears throat> in real world at a young age, like you said, we shouldn't have been watching, but we were watching it and watching it now. There's just, it's so different. And I feel like you guys had a lot of freedom and there was no social media and there was no one bothering you guys. You guys were able to live your best lives. Yeah. Melissa, thank you so much. I got so excited. I choked. <laughs> 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 the fact that I got to speak with you, I am so excited for thank this. You. I'm so excited for you and your journey. I love following you on Twitter. You are hilarious. <laughs> Uh, please Thank tell fans where they can find you out on social media and to follow and to uh, continue to follow you. Yeah, listen, follow me before they take these blue checks away from me because I am over there cutting up. Uh, my Twitter is Melissa RWNO and my Instagram is Melissa Beck RWNO. They got little blue checks. Somebody said I was important enough to have blue checks. So um, go <laughs> ahead and get over there before they uh, take it away. Um, thank you so much. I'm so happy you're reading my tweets. I'll follow you back because, you know, I do a follow for follow. Come on, queen. <laughs> Thank you so much, Melissa. Can't wait. Uh, Real World, New Orleans, the homecoming comes out, premieres April 20th. And fans, you guys have to check it out. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to stop the recording.